CMI has been carrying out joint operations at the airport in some incidents. CMI operatives have been accused of carrying out illegal arrests. President Museveni yesterday issued new aviation guidelines in which he ordered chieftaincy of military intelligence CMI operatives out of the Entebbe International Airport. President Museveni explained that the CMI work was to carry out counterintelligence and they have no business at the airport. He said, I have discovered that my instructions were never carried out. All of these wonderful people, I think Major General Abdel Kandiho and Brigadier Charles Bakahumura, I wanted to find out what CMI is doing at the airport. President. According to the Constitution, the declaration of winners of an election should be done within 15 days after voting. Announcing the first results, National Elections Commission Chairperson Devieto Brown Lansana said former Vice President Joseph Buakai of the Unito Party UP has 50.71% and incumbent President George Weah of the CDC Party accumulated 49.29% constituting 22.33% out of the total votes. Borka Joseph N. UP votes obtained 193,041, constituting 50.71%. We are George Manning, CDC votes obtained 187,615, constituting 49. Point two nine percent from the provisional results, Buaka leads with a difference of five thousand four hundred twenty six votes, with over seventy seven percent votes still left to be counted. Prior to the reading of the results, Buaka supporters led by Monserrado County Representative Yeke Koluba took to the streets, chanting that their candidate had won the election. For making former president George Manu Weah a one term president. We also want to recognize President Ambassador Joseph Yuma Bwakai. We also want to recognize Vice President Jeremiah Banku. Let me say to the Liberian people, the celebration has started. Claiming an early victory has raised concerns among some Liberians like Aliyu Sise. He says he wants peace in the country. I think the process of voting was really peaceful in accordance with the laws. All I do I expect is to Peace that we need, nothing else but the peace. The Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS, in a statement released on Wednesday, warned individuals or groups against doing anything that could lead to violence and undermine the heart and stability of Liberia. For VOA's Daybreak Africa. A presidential candidate in the Democratic Republic of Congo says other opposition candidates meeting outside of the country to discuss a unity candidate for December's election should be disqualified from running. Noel Shiani, leader of the political group called Force for Change, says any candidate chosen outside of DRC is not nationalistic enough and would be controlled by foreign interests. According to Reuters, opposition candidate Martin Fayulu, Denis Mkwege, and Moi Katumbe have been meeting this week in South Africa to decide on a potential unity candidate to challenge President Felix Tshisekedi in the December 20 polls. Shiani tells me that any candidate chosen outside of DRC would only be a puppet of foreign countries and companies. I will not go to South Africa. I will not go to a foreign country. DRC is an independent and sovereign state. How can presidential candidate go and meet in a foreign country on the invitation of foreign parties or NGOs or governments? In my view, those kind of leaders, they don't know what they are doing. They should not, they should not be running for president of the Congo. What do you make of the whole idea of uh, a unity candidate? Well, the idea of a unity candidate uh, who is a nationalist, uh, who meets the criteria to be president of the Congo, the idea is not bad. But a unity candidate sponsored by foreign countries, foreign companies, foreign NGOs, in my view, it's a big dilemma because such a candidate cannot be loyal to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Instead, it will be a puppet candidate working for foreign countries 
in looting the natural debt of the Congo uh, to pay his uh, foreign sponsors. So in my view, that's a terrible idea. Imagine the United States of America, for example, the Democratic Party or the Republican Party going to meet in Russia to nominate their candidate for the presidency. Can you imagine that? Those people should be disqualified immediately. They don't deserve to be considered in the Congo by the people of the Congo. But don't you think you are taking this issue too far? I mean, what's wrong with meeting in another country to discuss issues of your country? It's not that the foreign country is going to influence the decision. It, it seems you're taking it too far. I know how it works. I am just asking you, don't ask the Congolese to accept the things that the Americans cannot accept for their countries. Can the Democratic Party or the, the Republican Party going to meet in Russia or in China to nominate their candidate for president, is that acceptable? If it is not acceptable for the Americans, what is happening here should not be acceptable to the Congolese. And I disapprove it because any candidate coming out under those conditions can only be a puppet of foreign countries, foreign companies, and he cannot defend the interest of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. That will be, as a matter of fact, contrary to the Chani law, which requires people at that level to be loyal to the Democratic Republic of the Congo and its people. So what do you think about the idea, the whole idea of the opposition coming up with a unified candidate for the December election? It depends on how it is done. If it is done in the Congo, with all the candidates from the opposition participating, starting by elaborating the criteria which will be transparent to nominate that uh, representative of the position, and those criteria should be very clear. According to uh, Mr. Fayulu, one of the uh, candidates, uh, the opposition leaders meeting in South Africa are also going to are also supposed to discuss the transparency of the election. They want to make sure that the December election are transparent. Do you agree with that? Well, I keep repeating the same thing. Why should such a meeting take place in South Africa or in a foreign country? Nawal Shiani is the leader of the Forces for Change political grouping in the DRC and a former a presidential candidate. He was speaking with us from the capital, Kinshasa. Rwanda has expressed disappointment in the ruling Wednesday of the United Kingdom Supreme Court that the plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda was unlawful because Rwanda could not be considered a safe third country. In a statement on social media, government spokesperson Yolan Makolo said Rwanda and the UK have been working together to ensure the integration of relocated asylum seekers into Rwandan society and that the country remains committed to its international obligations. Gatete Nyirigambo is a human rights lawyer and political blogger in Kigali. He tells me that Rwanda is only trying to provide a haven to migrants now wanted by the UK. The Rwandan government is not pleased with the decision because the ruling appears as though it was Rwanda that was on trial. I mean, if the UK wants to send asylum seekers to Rwanda, if they don't, that's fine. But the question is, when you look at the ruling, it is a ruling that talks about Rwandan human rights record, Rwandan this, Rwandan that, and in fact, half of it Rwandans do not even agree with. So they're wondering how come, instead of having a debate about the United Kingdom, a rich country in Europe deciding to deport black people and Arab people. Is that lawful? Is that in line with the human rights, international law, and so on and so forth? But, so Rwandans are shocked about this. I think part of the ruling is that uh, Rwanda is not a safe country for asylum seekers and refugees. But whether Rwanda is safe, is unsafe, is a secondary question. People are avoiding the main question. What Rwanda did was avail itself. It's like someone who's homeless, you give them a house, and then they start criticizing the quality of the house that you give them. The idea is, why are asylum seekers being sacked from the United Kingdom in the first place? Because that's a violation of international law. Now, we can discuss the quality of asylum seekers in Rwanda. You have asylum seekers 
who has a good life in Rwanda, you have others who don't. And that is a fair discussion to have. But the main question really is, why is it that the UK, in total violation of decency, why is the UK chasing its own migrants who found it true? I mean, Africans are rightfully angry because they say if we wanted to go to Rwanda, would have taken a plane and go to Rwanda. We know where Rwanda is. It's much cheaper, it's much safer to travel there than to go to the Mediterranean Sea and to go to both at the risk peril of our life. You have written that the issue is uh, a fundamental ideological question. What is the ideology? The ideological question is human beings fleeing conflict of all kinds, finding the United Kingdom as a safe haven. But the United Kingdom, a rich country, is much, much bigger than Rwanda, decides to get rid of people who, who try to find safe haven in the country. And the poor African, small poor African country says, instead of mistreating those people, send them to us, we take care of them. And this is the same UK that does not stop from teaching us about moral values, about human rights, about this and that. And so the ideological question at stake here is, how does a poor country show more humanity than a rich country that claims to be the guarantor of human rights and human values and so on? So the UK are criticizing Rwanda to avoid the big questions.